Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of the John Morris Show. So in this episode, I'm I'm working on an e, a multi-part e-commerce script tutorial. And so the whole idea behind this, just real real quick before I get into to showing you the code here, is uh, a lot of times, I, I know in my experience, you, you deal with clients who do a lot of manual management of their product line. A lot of times they deal in spreadsheets and so forth. And then you as a developer have to do this back and forth kind of managing between what they're doing manually and what you need to do for the website in order to keep everything up to date and so forth. And it can become a real head headache. And so this script is essentially going to help kind of make that a little bit easier not really by making it more complex, but actually by making it a lot simpler. And so I'm recording some of the first few lessons and I was going through the first lesson actually today and a, a, a pretty big chunk of it talks about both, I, I'm creating a, setting the foundations for a database class. So I have a lot of people who ask me about creating classes. I also have a lot of people ask me about connecting to and querying databases and so forth. And this is a nice kind of combination of both. So you see how how to make a class, but you'll also see how to connect to MySQL or, and, and get that all up and running and some basic queries that you can do from there. So if that's something that you're, you're looking to learn, I know some of you probably are familiar with that, but I know there's plenty of you who may still be trying to figure that out, or you just want to kind of get into this e-commerce e script tutorial, then uh, you'll definitely want to check out today's video. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the video. You can see we have the beginnings of what looks like a database class here. Now quickly, I'll cover the config file because you can see I'm including it up here and I'm using some constants down here. So as you might have guessed, the config file is just defining those constants. So the database name, the username, the password, and the host. This is what you would change for your particular database and setup. So your database name, user pass, etc. So again, we're requiring that in here, we're passing those constants in when we instantiate this instance of this class. And then the class itself, we have two methods. So we have our constructor method and this method runs, the constructor method runs every time this uh, class is instantiated. So when we instantiate this right here, this constructor method runs automatically. And so we're passing in our database name, our user, our password, and our host. And all we're really doing here is creating a new instance of MySQLi and passing in that same data that MySQLi needs in order to create a connection to the MySQL database. And then we're storing that connection as a class property so that essentially the way this works is because we're instantiating this down here and because we're running the connection in the constructor, basically every time a page loads, we are going to create a connection to MySQL and we're gonna have that ready and available to us that we can then on that page, we don't have to redo that every time. It's already loaded and ready to go. And then on a particular page, we can just start using this uh, this connection here in order to make our calls to MySQL. Now, that may not always be ideal for every scenario, every application that you might build. But I think in this particular case, our entire site is built around uh, the being connected to MySQL. So in the, I think in this particular case, it makes sense. So we're creating that connection here. And then all we're doing is doing some error checking here. So uh, here, we're checking to see if there was some sort of error connecting. And if there was, we're going to print the error, and then we're going to exit. Now, and so we're, we're not going to do anything else at that point. And if it was successful, we're going to print connection successful. So two things here. One, this right here is temporary. This is only going to be here really probably this video. We're going to delete this after this because we just want to, at this point, make sure that we are connected and we want to be able to check that. We want to have something visually we can see. If we don't print this out here at this point, all we're going to see is a blank page. So, which would mean we're 
connected successfully, but it wouldn't give us any sort of visual feedback. So that's all this is for here. We're going to delete this right at the end of this video. And then this here, you know, there, there's a lots of different ways that you could handle this. Probably throw an exception and, and handle it in, in a number of different ways. I'm not going to get too far into that here. I want to keep this uh, simple and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But feel free to change this and handle this in whatever way uh, that you want. Here we're just printing the error and we're going to we're gonna exit. So that's a pretty simple way of handling this. But you can, of course, adapt that to whatever you like. Uh, and then here we have a simple query method. Basically, you pass in a MySQL query string and we're going to run it through our MySQL uh, connection, run the query method off of that and just pass it through and return whatever re the result is. So this is a really basic standard just query method that allows us to run whatever queries we want. You would use this primarily for your internal queries that aren't, we're going to create an insert and an update and a delete and a get met. We're going to create all of those methods for this database class, but there will be things sometimes internally, for example, this install script. This isn't something that's going to fit in an insert or an update or a delete or a get, right? This is something that's different from all of those things. So you still need a generic kind of query method for those sorts of internal type things. And that's what this is. All right, so once we have this, then now we can actually check our connection. So we'll go to includes here, and then we'll go to db.php and we get this connection successful message here. So we know that we're connected at this point. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that video, maybe picked up a thing or two that you didn't necessarily know before. As I said, I'm making going to be making this full tutorial uh, available. It's going to be available to customers of my PHP 101 course as a bonus over there. So if you'd like to get access to not only all the tutorials for this e-commerce script, but also all of the source code, plus my complete PHP 101 course, my bonus interview with Michael Phoenix, all of that stuff, you can do so at johnmorrisonline.com slash deal. Not only are you going to get access to all that stuff, but that's going to give you uh, $10 off the regular price of the course. So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash deal for... Uh, the discount and access to everything. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll talk to you next time.